Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Jared and if you don't know who I am, I am a product animation artist, product visualization artist, graphic designer, um, several different things. But today I'm excited to welcome you to the introduction to a series I'm doing on Octane Renderer for Blender. In this series of videos, my goal is to take you from having no experience with Octane or maybe even Blender and by the end of it have you export a, uh, a product visualization of some sort uh, that you create on your own to kind of teach you the principles of how to use this render engine and uh, 3D software combination to create some really cool stuff. In today's chapter, we're going to cover installation, setup, some workflow tips, setting up some default things that'll help you uh, speed up your workflow in the future, and just some of my general tips for how to set yourself up for success with Octane and Blender. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into installation. All right, so we are now on Octane's website or Otoy's website. Otoy is the developer of Octane. And we're gonna go over to this shop tab. If you don't have an Octane subscription, don't worry. Um, Octane has actually offered a free version of Octane for Blender since about 2019, I believe. If you come over to free trial and click on Octane Render Prime, then you can try Octane Render for Blender. Um, the, really the only limitation to my knowledge is that you can only use one GPU, but for most people that's really not gonna be an issue. Um, again, if you have a studio license or Octane X or anything like that, um, obviously we can go ahead and install that version. But if you don't have an Octane subscription, just click try now here and then meet us back up in the download section. Clicking on downloads, you'll see that Blender's right at the top of the list since it's first alphabetically. And installing Octane for Blender is really simple, but some people have trouble with it just because you have to install two different things. Let's go ahead and click the most recent version of both uh, softwares. For me, that is 2022.1.12716. And you need to download the same version of Blender for Octane and the Octane server. So let's go ahead and download both of these. We'll click I accept, download. And I'm just gonna open this. And then I'll go back to the downloads page and I'll do the same with the Octane server. Open this as well. You may have to, uh, since Blender is from a third party developer, you may have to come in here and do keep, keep anyways, and then your software will open up as expected. And now that both of these are up, I'm gonna go ahead and install uh, Blender Octane Render Edition first. I'll do I agree. I'll leave it as uh, C Program Files Blender Octane. And then I'll just let this install. Once that's done, we can just click Finish and then do the same with our Octane Render Server Studio. Just click I agree, install the default location, and we'll let this run. We'll click finish. And now this is the part where I've seen some people get confused. Why exactly did we just install that server studio? Well, let's come down to our start menu and we'll just click on the Octane server studio. You'll have to allow administrative permissions and then in your system tray, so down in this bottom right corner, um, just click on the Octane render server studio icon and we're going to need to uh, hit download. This is just downloading some software from NVIDIA that's needed for our render engine to run smoothly. Once that installation completes, just click on the Octane Render Studio icon in your system tray again, and you'll get this little window here that says Octane is not activated. Um, let's go ahead and click activate, and we're gonna be prompted to sign in to our Otoy account. Once we sign in, uh, whether you're on the free version or subscription, you should get this message saying that Octane is activated using your Otoy account. Basically, all that we've just done is license our Octane account to this computer. Um, and the reason that that's important is because if we were to open up Blender currently and start the Octane live render, uh, nothing would happen because Octane doesn't necessarily know where it's being used or if you even have access to the service. So this is just an easy step 
that you do have to do every time you use Plunder for Octane, or every time you restart your computer, I should say, is you have to activate your Otoy account on your computer. But that's really all that service is doing. Um, so if you ever restart your computer, you'll just come over to your start menu and you will uh, just click this Octane Server Studio button and you'll activate your account. And that's all you have to do. That's all that that Server Studio is for. Now you can do everything else that you wanna do directly inside Blender and Octane. So once again, as if we were doing it for the first time, I'm gonna click my Octane Server Studio. I'm gonna open it from my system tray. I'm gonna click activate. And now my account is activated on my computer and I can go ahead and open up Blender Octane Edition. Now we're greeted with a regular Blender splash screen. You can see we're using currently version 3.5.1, which is the latest version of Blender um, as this video is being recorded. I'm just going to leave all of these on default and we can hit next and then open up a general new file. Next, let's enable Octane Render by going up to Edit, Preferences, go down to Add-ons, and search for Octane. Now you can enable Render uh, Octane Blender, and then we can twirl this down, and there are things that you can do in here, like set your Octane local DB path, texture caching, you can set paths here, you can change your default material type. These are all things that we'll get into over the next couple videos. So that's it. Now we have Octane for Blender installed and we can come over here to our render properties and change this from Eevee to Octane. And you can see we now have access to the Octane kernel and all of its different settings. There's no reason to get overwhelmed here. These are all things that we will cover as we move through the next couple of videos. For now, I just want to show you some of the different panels, some of the different options that you have in Octane, and set up some defaults that will help us be efficient as we move through using Octane. We're gonna cover render settings in depth as we move throughout the next several videos, but for now, let's go ahead and just set up some quick default settings so that things will move a lot smoother. Let's set our max preview samples to 128. Let's set our GI clamp to 16. Let's we'll scroll down. Let's enable adaptive sampling. Let's enable motion blur. Let's go into our device preferences and let's take our GPU and click use priority. If you have an RTX card, also be sure that use RTX acceleration is on. This is just ensuring that we get the most out of our GPU possible. And so these are just a couple of quick settings that will help us throughout our getting started process. Let's open up color management and set our view transform to raw. And we need to be sure that our look is on none. If you hit N on your keyboard in the Blender viewport, you see this octane tab on the side over here. These are where we have access to our preview mode, camera imager and post process settings. Again, these are things that we will cover in depth as we move through the next several videos, but let's go ahead and enable and override both of these. Let's turn on ACES tone mapping, which is going to just enable the ACES color profile. Blender does a great job, a much better job even of Cinema 4D or then Cinema 4D of integrating the ACES profile into an sRGB output. And let's go ahead and enable and override Octane post-process preview modes. Let's close these up and we will save them for going in depth in future videos. This is important for Octane because if you leave Blender's view transforms on, you will not be seeing accurate light or color. Blender will basically be putting kind of a filter over top of your image and that's not something that we want. Octane is an unbiased render engine. It handles light and color fantastically on its own. We also enabled the ACES color space um, so we don't want Blender doing anything on top of what we just set up. Let's delete Blender's default light and hit Shift A in the viewport and go down to lights. And now you can see that in addition to Blender lights, we have all these octane lights. Let's add in an octane area light. Uh, I'm holding my middle mouse button to move around the viewport and let's hit G X that is to move this light along the X axis. And so now we just have an octane light in by default instead of a blender light. 
We don't have to do that with our camera because if you come over here, the default or the, uh, the Blender camera by default has Octane camera settings, including our camera imager for render mode and our post processing. We overrode those in our in panel over here, so we don't have to have either of these enabled. One awesome feature of Octane is if we come up to window Octane DB, we get this little window with a local database, which we'll set up uh, in a later video, but we also have access to this live database with materials, textures, emissions, and a starter set. And if we twirl some of these down, you can see that Octane comes built in with some really, really nice shaders. And these are things that we can download and incorporate into our projects. Um, and it's just a good library that Octane includes. Apart from this, if you're already a Blender user, you can go through and set up everything else that you would as usual. You can set up, uh, you can set up your add-ons, you can set up your uh, asset browser databases. I highly recommend that you play around with your default scene, play around with some Octane render settings, play around with the different lights, maybe some camera settings. You can do really anything else that you want. And then when you are finished, you can just come up to File, Defaults, Save Startup File. And so now, every time that we open Blender, we will have this Octane Render Engine set up with these default settings that we did. And so we won't have to do that every time we open Blender anymore. And that is how you set up and install Octane for Blender. If I come up here and turn on my rendered view at this point, you'll see that Octane is working. Octane is incredibly snappy. Um, I, to be honest with you, I think it's uh, I think it's faster than Cycles personally. Um, and you can see that our Octane area light is uh, interacting with our scene, and we are all set up to get started about learning uh, Octane for Blender. Um, there's a lot there's a lot to dive into as far as settings go with Octane, but fundamentally it's important to remember that 3D work is the same regardless of what render engine you're using. Lighting, materials, composition are all more important than what render engine you use. I just think that Octane and Blender is a fantastic combination for producing incredible CG results quickly, and so I wanted to do this little series on how to use it. So I'm really excited for the next couple of videos. If you haven't subscribed already, get subscribed so that you don't miss anything, and I will see you in the next chapter.